Hello, game with no name. Continuing with the swirling as well as the repercussions. Now, I'm talking more on how, uh, because we, we kind of started with Lauren Smithfield when we came to talking about this conversation of squirreling going bad. And I'm showing sure contrasting when talking about how things just end up badly. Now, in a lot of cases, black men and dark skinned men have had consensual sex with white women. However, to escape trouble, well, they've thrown the men oftentimes under the bus. Now, this is one of the, one of the, one of the only times I actually uh, watch Fox News. But more or less to go into it, I think I've stated in the last video, and I'm gonna make it clear. There are only a few reasons why they're actually hearing out the black men, and one of the reasons is to weaken feminism because feminism is the opposite of conservatism, even though they're kind of cut from the same cloth. So they want to weaken feminism, but they also want to give white men leeway without seeing racist. So I think they started considering black men's stories and they came into a lot of this because they'll use other races to kind of fight their battles for them. And notice there are plenty of cases where if the man's white, he just walks. Even with proof in the rape case, he just walks. But here, um, yeah. Now behind bars for lying about rape. 19-year-old Nikki Uvino claimed that she was raped in 2016 by two Sacred Heart University football players, but she then admitted that she was lying. Unfortunately, so much of the damage had already been done. Jonathan Hunt is live in our West Coast newsroom with the backstory here. Hi, Jonathan. Good evening, Mom. The jury saw she was already underway in this case, which has irrevocably changed the lives of the accuser, now the one awaiting sentencing, and the accused, who it turns out were actually the victims. Nikki Novino had originally claimed that two Sacred Heart football players had pulled her into a bathroom at a party in 2016 and then took turns at raping her. And as recently as January, her lawyer had said Novino wanted the case tried. Now, um, to keep it real, uh, I, I never hear feminists actually address these issues and talk about these things. That's why I was ready to scroll down because, and I'm going to do a separate video for it, but just like what Amber heard in certain situ situations, they never talk about this. Now, it's different for black people in civil cases dealing with color and race and different things because propaganda is slapped into our face over and over again. Before the feminists and this and any other, they have the space and the platform to talk about these issues. And to see that they don't talk about cases like this, and as well as try to grow from cases like this, and try to empathize and shift from using guilt to actually addressing these issues, it hurts their trustworthiness, to be honest. accepted a plea deal admitting she had made up the assault allegation because uh they had to probably find some strong ass evidence on her as her arrest warrant affidavit stated quote it was the first thing that came to mind and she didn't want to lose another male student as a friend and potential boyfriend and the affidavit also what? said Uvino believed when the other student quote heard the allegation it would make him angry and sympathetic to her investigators said the what? football players admitted having sex with Uvino but said it was consensual their attorney said the plea deal cannot make up for what Uvino has put the young men through but that quote it does send a powerful message that lying about a serious incident carries serious consequences Uvino's lawyer yeah just for the men though said quote this was a very difficult decision for nikki and a sad day for her and her family she will now begin the process of healing and rehabilitation as she awaits her final sentence under the plea bargain yuvino will be formally sentenced august 23rd and will spend one year in prison Martha. Story. Jonathan, thank you very much. Here now exclusively tonight on the story, Frank Riggio, the lawyer for the two men who are falsely accused, they have not been named. Uh, enough damage has already been done to them. Everybody obviously on campus knows um, about them. Were you were you shocked that she came for you? You've got the jury, you're about to go to trial, and then suddenly what? What was the catalyst? Suddenly the day came where I think she thought that I'm going to see the whites of the eyes of this jury. 
and I just can't handle it. And it was surprising. I have to admit, it was surprising. I thought she was going to go to trial. I thought she wanted to present her story, her multiple stories, to a jury. But at the very last minute, she changed her mind. She, I mean, it's extraordinary because we're in the middle of this, you know, nationwide Me Too movement where uh, we're yeah. told See? That Me Too. This is why they started being more willing to bail out and help out men like this who are in this situation. Uh, now, I don't know the colors of the men, but I know one of them is black. Or dark skin. That all women should be believed. And that, that's the environment that we live in right now. Is there anything, you know, what, what are the problems with that potentially? Oh, actually, let me go ahead and talk about this. Now, there are women who actually don't want to feed into the Me Too thing because they're smart. And they realize that destroying the incentive means that men won't compete for them. Instead, they're, they will wait. This is why I've said in the past, uh, men in minority communities uh, who are dealing with Western Americanized women who think they're the cream of the crop need, you know, need to stop giving them money and trying to incentivize them and spending money on that. Stop spending money in bars in certain places because that's feeding into a system where they're not going to give you anything. They know the most valuable thing that they can offer is sex because that's the most valuable thing they can offer. They can't offer being a good wife. They can't offer in a lot of cases uh, doing certain things, being a community woman, woman, willing to work with your mom, figure things out. And it's not about your mom liking her 100%, but it's about her being your peace. That is immeasurable. That is, we need that, but they're not willing to do that. Instead, they're more or less willing to hold off on sex because that's all they can do. You know, that's the one thing nowadays in Western civilization that separates them from men, is that they got, they got coochie and they can kind of uh, hold that off and be like, oh, well, since uh, I, if I starve you of sex, you'll think I'm, I don't, I'm the most important thing. And sadly it works, but women like her understand that eventually it comes around because in the Caucasian community, and I've kind of explained this already, the white men date out. The white men date out, and if the men are afraid to to approach white women and stuff like that, if the white men are afraid to approach white women, then women like her are going to be in trouble. And I believe and know that she understands that. Even listen to her story. She had sex, but she was scared that uh, certain things would happen. Now, they're saying, oh, it's because of jury judge, but I believe it might have been some strong proof where they might have been able to prove something and she remembered. Because, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't see her really changing up because she wanted a guy to like her and this, that, and the other. Well, the Me Too movement is a very powerful movement. How many years women have fought to have their voice heard? This does a tremendous disservice to that. What it does is it now causes someone to they've admittedly lied and now it does soil what would be you know otherwise valid uh, allegations the evidence ended up proving that there wasn't a sexual assault she lied over and over again first claiming a, a sexual assault then not then being assaulted then not it does a complete disservice i mean you can't I, I feel for her as well obviously she has you know now i believe that if someone who was in the me too movement had backed her up she would have stuck with her original story Truthfully, I, I believe that. And it's sad, but things start stop things stop being empathetic and they start getting political when it comes to things like this because there are a lot, and I mean a lot of women who, they want things like this to stick. They really do, they really do. Not because men are guilty, but because they want to exercise that power. And in the Me Too movement, Believe All Women, stuff like that, yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, even though I don't know this girl personally, I'm like, they might have, they must have had some strong proof or a way to back it up, because that's just how bad it, it, it's gotten to a point. Now, a lot of women have calmed down on it, but because they're smart. Don't get me wrong, the, min the minority women and the black women, they're going head in with the, oh, um, we can do without our men type of thing. 
Whereas some of the other white women in other races, they're starting to calm down. They're starting to realize, yo, we need to be able to marry. We, we need to be able to do certain things. You know, they started to calm down for real. Some issues that she needs to, to work out. But what has been the impact on the lives of these two young men? They're no longer in school. They don't have Yikes. the experience at that school anymore. They're in the working world, so they're doing as best as they can. The one year in jail that she, Miss Uvino, is being sentenced to pales in comparison to the 20 years that these boys could have received had they been arrested. Had they Jeez. Been arrested. So while the punishment by some may be classified as severe, it pales in comparison to what those boys are facing. And they, they can't go back to school? They can't restart their lives where they left off? They can, and they're considering all their options right now. There will be a civil suit against Miss Uvino, most likely. So all of their options are being considered. They're doing as well as they can right now. I mean, as you say, it, 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 these kinds of allegations, what they do, is the, they're problematic, obviously, for the people that are accused, and also for all the other cases out there that are legitimate. Me Too cases where there are cases of assault, it really muddies the waters in such a dangerous, dangerous way. But it's important for people to understand that if you do come forward with a false allegation, you can end up in jail. Yes, you can. You can be arrested, you can be put in jail, and you can suffer the consequences. When you lie about a serious incident, it carries serious consequences. And that's what we have here. I'm going to stop it right there, and I'm going to go ahead and... One year for being a liar, 20 years for being lied on if convicted. The inequality in this country, and it's towards men. Now, like I said, I believe things like, well, not things, but companies like Fox News and stuff started covering and talking about these issues because they wanted to give white men more leverage and help them out with their situations, whether they're guilty or not. And the proof of this is, is there, even before this, there have been cases where, like I said, white men have been charged with stuff like this and it didn't even, it did nothing. Like, they didn't even go to jail, they didn't even get convicted. Even when it comes to death, really. And we saw it with the other situation, but it's just creepy and crazy. False accusers need to receive the same penalty as their victims would have received. I don't think that would have worked out more or less because if they had said yo you go to jail for 20 years she wouldn't have been honest i don't think she would have been honest i i think uh and what i honestly do think is that the feminist movement if they got behind this they would have convinced her to stick with her story because it would affect their stories but this is one of the things that separates the feminist movement from all the other civil movements and things of that nature they have power and representation and consideration, and they have automatic empathy from men. Now, the empathy stops at a certain point because, well, let's be honest here, it, it, when it comes to a lot of cases, what are women are trying to replace the men? What are like, X, Y, and Z, I'm, I'm gonna do whatever I can to hurt the men. And there are cases where it's just like, these women break down and they're all about it trying to rely on the men. The legal system needs to start charging women. There are so many more victims than just these two men. Yeah, but it's about proof. And that's why I said a lot of men need to stop going out. They need to stop going into these cases because the women are, just like in the black community, the women are pretty much monetizing the market because they know that their, you know, their coochie is one of the ultimate incentives. So they're like, yo, I'm going to do whatever I can to control this. Because when women realize their voices weren't being heard, they took charge of the market and sexualization of themselves, which isn't inherently a bad thing. But they didn't stop sexualizing themselves. They started controlling the rhetoric of it. And this, in turn, is very dangerous. But yeah, that's all for me out of this one. It's been all of to do a different brew, and I had to talk to you more about when swirling goes well wrong.